welcome to the EHF Euro 2018 live show presented by Lidl. I'm your host Rafael Ayan coming to you from our studio in Zagreb. Let's start the show by looking at the action from last night. That is day three of the competition. We had matches played in groups A and B. Let's start with Croatia against Iceland. Both of these were looking for a second win because that win would make them earn an automatic main round berth. Whereas the loser would have everything to play for in their last preliminary round match. The hosts were without their star Domagoj Duvniak. Let's see how they did versus Iceland. Well, hello and welcome to the city of Split in the south of Croatia. Day three at the Men's European Handball Championships. Oh, straight through the legs of the keeper. Early warning for Iceland. Not for the faint heart of this game, but we knew this would be a tough game. Defensively straight through. That's beautiful. The fans love it. And back in front go Iceland, courtesy of Aaron Palmarsson. Well pushed away. Excellent defence by Buntic. Oh, incredible play. What a spin. Brilliant by Karacic. Sprinted down the court at 100 miles an hour. The big number three line player. Oh, superb! All in the wrist. A stunning shot. Sheer class. Ah, oh, Bori had to pick the ball out of the air. And that's the biggest lead yet. Croatia dropped the ball. That was. Cleverly played, Sigurdsson, the captain, is away. Oh, saved again, and Stivanovic! What a performance by the Schaffhausen keeper! Mamic hits the second goal. Looks like a 3-2-1 defence now by the Icelanders. Oh, Koplia, a bit of luck. The ball just broke loose somehow, he had to... Uh, into the last minute. Palmarsson, long range shot, beautiful. When he's on song, he's on song. No, drops the ball, and that's it. And Croatia are through to the main round. A superb victory against Iceland, 29 22, built on superb defending. Also in Group A, Serbia versus Sweden, the two losing sides faced off in split. And um, Sweden really looking to improve their attack, whereas Serbia were without Marko Vujin. Let's see how this one turned out south in Croatia. Here are the highlights. So welcome back to the Spaledja Marina in Split in the south of Croatia and day three at this men's European Handball Championship. Oh, good play. The defence moving up and leaving a big gap at the back. And Bojan Beljanski steps in. They've given it away. A little quick cut, one, two. And Lagerdun gets goal number three. And every mistake now by Serbia is being punished. They are playing much too close in, no pace. He's having a terrific season. Great if he could translate that into goals for his country as well. Into the wing. Did well. Oh, he had to be quick about it. The ball was over the area even before he grabbed it. And that goes out quickly the other end. Dummies the first shot and Ilic scores a blinder. Supara did well to put it up court so quick. We're midway through the second half. Well, I'm not sure that was intended for Ekberg, but it found its way to the captain anyway, and he scores. Out of play. Doesn't matter anyway, and Ilic is up like a rocket. Yes! Bit by bit, they are coming back, Serbia. That's good. Yes! Oh! Tolving scores, and despite being two players down, Sweden score. Sweden. 
and we're inside the last two minutes. So Sweden get their campaign back on track here. And that is the end of the game. What a shame for Serbia, such a brave fight back in the second half. Those were the highlights from Group A. Time for us to now look at the standings after two matches played. Croatia are already through to the main round, as are Sweden, who cannot finish outside the top three. Now, moving on to Group B. Norway were looking to bounce back from their opening loss and they took on the Belarus side, buoyed by their win against Austria. Let's see how Sargasson and co. did. Hello and welcome to the Zeptika Sports Arena. This is handball, it's the men's EHF Euro 2018. Sagerson. Mo Sullivan and Tonneson again goes with a shot. That little treble has worked well and it's provided them with another goal. Belarus very slow to pick up the rebound. Tonneson onto it in a flash. After the bright start from Norway, they find themselves level. There's a chance now because Belarus have fumbled the ball and Miral is in, beats Saldatsenko and now they lead 4-3. Belarus have the lead. No way for some defending to do. Five and a half minutes with no goal for Belarus. They'll look back at this if they don't get anything from this game. And Norway get another goal. Belarus a player down. Norway with the empty goal because of the fact. But they're a player down. And see of hustle and bustle. Oh, and that's a wonder goal. <laughs> Very nicely now. Belarus come away with it. It's three on one. Yurinok inside. Goal scored by Baranow. Stoic looking coach Chepsov. Doesn't really show his frustrations easily. That kind of sums up the way things have gone for Belarus of late as that ball managed to slip through. And now Sagerson's away, he's on his own. He needs no help. And it's 33 goals to 27. But that is the end of the match. Norway get the victory. Final results. Norway 33, Belarus 28. And so we move on to the last one from this Group B. That was Austria against France. The Austrians the clear underdog in this one. And their coach Patrick Hur Johannesson was really looking and hoping for a miracle against world champions France. Let's take a look at these highlights from Porridge. Hello and welcome to Porridge for live coverage from the EHF Men's European Handball Championship here in Croatia. Clayton Lucas with you. Avalo is in, he comes around, a little lob, the first goal. France won nothing. That is a spectacular goal and that's more like it from Austria. The fans delighted. Same three, Claire. And Gisson and Remoli. That's inside for Turnau. Good goal. And a nice play as well. Turnau got himself in a great position ahead of Herberger. And Herberger's in the other end. Nice work by him. Buffeting he's been getting from opposition defences. Good save, Bilipov. Austria catching France on the fast break. Very nice. No foul given against Austria as well. Nine goals the difference coming into the last 11 minutes. 
try as they might, Austria can't seem to get a foothold in this one. Kandolf intercepted again. Austria running out of ideas. Cachateau running the ball down the other end for the goal. A 10-goal lead. Zeiner. And it was France that have come out on top in the end. A comfortable victory for Didier Dinar and his team. The final score, Austria 26, France 33. Time to look at the standings from Group B, where only France have already secured their place in the main round. It's all to play for for the other three teams. Now that completes the action from day three of the competition. Well, it does, but only almost, because there's time now for us to take a look at our emoji fan vote. Remember the three best actions we've chosen? Well, you can't because you haven't seen them yet. So let's take a look and then tell us who do you want to vote for. Long ball, Cachetot plucks it out of the sky. Brilliant save. Abelow was in the area though. So too, Cachetot getting in the way of the keeper. his bearings on that shot, opportunist in the extreme, Belyansky just shot over in the general direction of the goal and hoped for the best, and he got lucky. It's not in any uh, textbook, that one. Well pushed away, excellent defence by Buntic. Oh, incredible play, what a spin! Brilliant by Karacic, sprinted down the court at 100 miles an hour, and then a little flick of the wrist to finish it off. So here is how you vote for your top action. If you like Thomas Bauer, you pick the watermelon. If you prefer Beljanski's goal scored with his back toward the goal, it'll be the banana. Or if you pick Karacic, his speedy goal, it's going to be the pineapple. So tell us which action you prefer, just respond below with the corresponding emoji and we will reveal the fan favorite toward the end of the show. Now, hello, welcome, Brian. Hello again. By the way, I'd be a watermelon, Thomas Bauer. I thought that was an excellent save, so that's my pick. If I was voting, but I won't, I'll keep it impartial. All right. Yeah. Um, if you're not here to pick the best action, why are you here? I'm here to bring you the weird and the wonderful from the EHF Euro 2018 so far. So let's launch this first clip and we'll get straight into it. All right, let's go. So here we have uh, Hungary play playing against Denmark and they hadn't scored for I think a few minutes, or I think about, up, about six, six to eight minutes. And uh, this was very unfortunate for Yannick Green in the Danish goal here. Uh, they're doing a bit of a carousel, some switches here and up steps Bodo now and he uh, Blew the, not, I wouldn't say blew the socks off him, but took the headband right off him there. And from one headband to another, here comes Shu on. So that's a, you see it there in slow-mo there, the headband right off. Look at that, that's beautiful. That's it's, skill. It's beautiful. You, you, did he get hurt in that? Or? I don't know if to ask him, I suppose. I don't know. I think I'd say he was okay. I'd say he was all right. I'd say it was more of a graze than anything else. Yeah. What's, the, what's the speed of the ball coming at him? I don't know. It could be plus 80 miles an hour, so... Yeah, that's yeah. Like 100k easily, yeah, it's, right? Yeah, it's pretty, pretty fast, yeah. Okay. So, not something you look forward to. If you're a goalkeeper, you got to get used to it, right? Yeah, yeah. You have to be a bit crazy, I think, sometimes. So the second gift, then, is the Spanish team after their win over the Czech Republic, and Entrevios just won the MVP award, and they're like school kids <laughs> on, on a schoolyard. So I, I love that one. That was pretty popular on Twitter, that one. It reminded me of my school days. When what, someone did, what did people comment about that one? Uh, people just loved the reactions of... Uh, Everyone crowding in, and then yeah, so it kind of reminded people of a schoolyard. That's what that's a few people were saying, like school, school pals on a schoolyard. Yeah. So he was really thrilled to get this uh, match play of the match award. Um, but it happens at, after every match, so it's really not that big of a deal, is it? 
I don't know, I think it's just the case that they're maybe a bit jealous and they want to bring him <laughs> down a few pegs after he won something like that. I think that's maybe more of what, uh, what they were trying to do there. But do you remember uh, Patrick Grutzky's save? Uh, I sure do. Yeah, well, we have, a, pick we have a bit of a yeah, we have a bit of a competitor for that. Okay. Ivan Cupic had his own version of this here. This, this, is, uh, this is quite outstanding as well, almost identical to Grutzky's save. I don't know which is, which is my favourite. I, I still would put Grotsky a little bit before this because it looks a little bit more athletic. But then Ivan Cupic is doing it with four fingers. So I guess the main difference I'm seeing here, there's no goalkeeper in the goal there, whereas uh, on the German side, Wolf was kind of rushing in behind him. Um, True. But not really making an attempt either. True. Yeah. But, Bo um, both very good saves. So maybe on, if you're on the, in the comments now, you can let us know which, which one you preferred. Yeah. I don't know. I think I, I, I'm on Team Grotsky for the moment. I think it just looked a little bit more. Yeah, me too. Fantastic, yeah. Say. Well, you did say that anyway, you know, being, being German. <laughs> <laughs> it was a good save. Yeah. It has nothing to do with being German. Okay. It's very athletic, uh, very jumping yeah. up, very impartial. <laughs> I always am. And the last one is something I recorded when I was in the stadium uh, in Zagreb. And this is one of the best exits out of a scene I think I've ever seen. So I made it into a bit of a, a gif uh, when your mother asked you to clean the dishes. <laughs> I just love that <laughs> exit. Stage left, as it were. <laughs> That's a pretty good one. Yep. <laughs> so, okay, and um, Brian, I hear yesterday you had time to watch the Macedonians practice. What were you up to? I was there with the Macedonian team and we filmed them doing a bit of a, a challenge. I wanted to test their geography skills and how well they knew other EHF Euro 2018 teams uh, and, and their geography. So um, I think, yeah, it worked well. It must uh, have been pretty funny. Oh, oh, well, I think they can decide for themselves. All right, let's take a look at the drawing competition. How well do EHF Euro 2018 teams know their geography? Well, let's find out. Not, not so good. This looks like... I don't know. <laughs> Give a guess. Italy. Italy? Yes. No, one more. Oh, wait. Okay, we got it. Okay, we got it. You don't draw good. You know this one? Yes. You know it already? Yes. Can I guess? Go for it. Belarus. Oh. <laughs> Hungary? Hungary? No. I, are you sure it's not Belarus? Not Belarus, no. Austria. Not bad. Not bad at all. But what comes next is true artistry. Take it away, Teleski. <laughs> Keep me. <laughs> <laughs> this looks like Spain. So what's the of Spain. <laughs> Croatia, because I heard it. <laughs> <laughs> Does that look like Croatia? No, this, it's, it's, it doesn't look like some part of the body, I don't know. Something inside. <laughs> Kidney or something. Some, some, some hidden part of the body. <laughs> <laughs> He's a little what do you say? So <laughs> <laughs> okay, He's a little firm. You give me a hint. Germany. Poland. Belarus. <laughs> <laughs> Everything's Belarus. Uh, Denmark. It doesn't look like Denmark. That's one, okay. One. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Very nice. Uh, good three. No, no. Two plus. Two plus. Two plus. Ten plus. Out of five. <laughs> Take a look at this beautiful Macedonian jersey. We've decided here in our EHF Euro 2018 live show to give it away. Now take a look at this video in which Philip Lazarov is drawing a country that's taking part in the EHF Euro 2018. Look at this and tell us which country you think you are drawing. Vote below, tell us. And um, you have all day to do so to win this beautiful jersey. We will reveal the winner in tomorrow's show. Now, moving on to tomorrow to tonight's matches, of course. We have action from groups C and D. First, it is at 6.15 throw off Slovenia versus Germany, followed by Montenegro 
against FYR. Macedonia at 8.30. In Group D, it's Hungary against Spain at 6.15. And then Czech Republic versus Denmark at 8.30. Now, do you remember our guest from last night? Fr Frano Rijan. Now, he's the one who's always inspiring fans in Zagreb and really getting them to cheer their teams on. For some amazing atmosphere at Zagreb Arena, that's what we are hoping for for tomorrow. So take a look at these images. Now, looking at tonight's matches, we'll be doing this a little bit different as we are bringing in, in some experts from across Europe who unfortunately cannot be here at the Euro. They will give their views on the upcoming games from tonight. First up, it is Germany against Slovenia. And um, the Slovenians really have their backs against the wall after their unexpected opening loss. Germany can already secure a spot in the main round and this is a rematch of last uh, the Euro from two years ago in which Germany knocked out Slovenia in the final match of the preliminary round. Um, Miha Zarabets, he uh, faces his teammates from Kiel, Wolf, Wienczek and Weinhold. And um, we have EHF TV commentator Tom O'Brannigan, who gives us his take on the match. Pozdrav, Hrvatska. Hello, Rafaela. Hello, EHF Euro. From a wet and windy Dublin in Ireland. Okay, as you can see, I'm not at uh, the EHF Euro this year. I've got my hands full here with the, the Bukhali, with the boys here. Um, so, big game today. It's uh, Germany against Slovenia. But before I get to that, I just want to say this competition between Brian Campion and Marcio and the Mojos, as you're calling yourselves over there, I just want to say, Marcio, you've got more chance of being Hercule Poirot in the next film than you have of beating Campion in whatever competition that he is. He's, uh, he's just a Snapchat king. Okay, let's get to the game. Let's ask the Bukhali. Love us to Germain. Who wants to win Germany? The big guy. Slovenia, the little guy. He likes Miha Zarabets. What can I say? I'm going with the big guy here. I think Germany wins today. I think they're too big. They're too strong. And uh, for right now, they just know how to beat Slovenia. Havala! See you all soon. Montenegro are looking for a win after 13 EHF matches lost and now it's against the Macedonian side. Now both are set to bring a lot of fans with the Macedonians having the majority in Arena Zagreb. These two have never met in an actual, in an official match. And um, Savage returns. And here's our view from Nemanja Savage. I'm gonna cut the chase from the first second year and say that uh, I have Macedonia down as favorites simply because on the wings of their triumph against Slovenia, uh, which uh, was actually a very difficult and the best game of the Euro so far, uh, I can see a lot of confidence for, for Macedonia from that game. Uh, meanwhile, uh, Montenegro, I'm not sure they'll be able to pick themselves up from a heavy loss against Germany. And uh, obviously their biggest forte, which is defense, uh, wasn't really working against the Germans. This deep combined 6-0-3-3 defense wasn't really, wasn't really cutting it and uh, I'm not sure it's going to be effective against Macedonians as well. Especially if 
uh, Kiro Lazarov and the guys are allowed to play more freely in attack, uh, which is going to be devastating for the for the Montenegrins, which uh, are without their best scorer, obviously, Vuko Borazan and their uh, first choice goalkeeper. Uh, meanwhile, I think that Macedonia is going to need any, any point in their chances to progress in the main round and beyond, which is obviously their goal for the Euro and it's a very ambitious bunch. I think uh, this game uh, against Montenegro is going to be uh, very decisive for them because they're, they don't want to be in a position seeking points against Germany. Now that's Nemanja's view on the match. Nice Christmas tree, by the way. Now moving on to Group D, and this one is Hungary versus Spain. Hungary lost the last two matches at an EHF Euro versus Spain, and they are also on their worst streak at an EHF Euro. That is six consecutive losses. Center back Raul and uh, and Trerios will pass his brother Alberto in most appearances at an EHF Euro for Spain, 45 in total then tonight. Um, Jorge Dagel takes, shares his view on this match. Hi, good morning handball fans. Today we have a great event at the European Championship of Croatia with the match against uh, uh, Spain, which uh, won uh, with a great victory in the opening match against Czech Republic and Hungary, uh, which uh, faced up uh, against Denmark instead of his defeat. Therefore, uh, I think it's a tough match for Spaniards against a rival with uh, such quality players uh, like the playmakers uh, Gabo Sassar or Matelekai. And, uh, but I think Spanos uh, there are a step above uh, against uh, a rival in a full generation change and a new stage lead uh, by Vlad, uh, Lubomir Branis as a coach. So enjoy this match and unique sport and hypnotic game. Bye. In the final one, Czech Republic versus Denmark. A win for Denmark would see them through to the main round. They have won two out of the last three versus the Czech Republic, with the Czech team really needing to turn down the number of turnovers. Here we have professional player and journalist Rasmus Boysen, who shares his analysis of the match. Hi guys, Rasmus Boysen from Denmark speaking. Tonight Denmark faces Czech Republic in the second group match in the European Championship. While Denmark won the first game against Hungary, Czech Republic had, a, had no chance against a great Spanish team. After one of my favorite players of all time, Filip Jika, retired, and the strong uh, playmaker of Czech Republic, Thomas Babak, Babak, is also injured, in my eyes, Czech Republic uh, lacks some experience in the back court. The young right back, Kasprik, he has a great future and he played a very good game against Spain in the first game. Uh, Denmark must be aware of, aware of him. Uh, for Denmark, Rasmus Lauge had an amazing first game against Hungary. I think Denmark is way too strong for Czech Republic and expect them to get an easy win. Great match to all of your handball fans out there. Greetings from Porto Santo, Portugal. Time to take a look at our emoji fan poll. The action you liked the most. Now it was the, fine, the pineapple and that's the action with Karacic, the Croatian. Let's take a look here. Now look at the speed. Oh, and then this beautiful finish, little flick of the wrist to score that one. And so the pineapple wins. Thank you everyone for voting here on Facebook. Now there's something else, remember, that you can win tonight today, all day, you can vote for the Macedonian jersey. You have to tell us, remember, we showed you a video of Philip Lazarov, here you see it again, drawing a country taking part in the EHF Euro 2018. Now we want you to tell us what country you think that is, that little shaped, yeah, just a little shape up there on the page, I would say. So what country could that be? Tell us. Tell us right here on Facebook. You have all day. And um, if you get it right, you might just be the winner of the Macedonian jersey. And we will give that to away tomorrow and announce the winner. Now, 
That's the end of the EHF Euro 2018 live show presented by Lidl. But as always, we will be back tomorrow, same time, 12 o'clock sharp, from this couch, from the studio here in Zagreb. I say bye for now from the EHF live show. See you tomorrow. Enjoy the action tonight.